Hello and welcome back to Beam NG Drive. I'm David in Ark and we are doing our series Crash Every Vehicle that comes with Beam NG and today we've got the H series van. Oh my goodness. There are a ton of these. I'm sure you've already seen the timestamp. You already know things are going to get crazy and it's going to be a long video and it's going to be okay. Why? Because we are taking every single vehicle that comes with Beam and G, and we are putting it to the test. As I mentioned, we're doing the H series vans. Oh, right into the guardrail. Look at that. As we've seen in several other vehicles, the hood in this particular case actually is relatively okay. The engine still runs. The rest of the vehicle, though, or at least the rest of the front end definitely in some trouble look at that even pushed the front wheels back under the passenger compartment i've got a pretty strong feeling we're gonna see a lot of that today as we cruise along here and hop in the delivery van or as my daughter calls this one the kidnapper van i don't know why she would say that but anyway here we go driving down the street in East Coast USA slamming into the guardrail. And look at that once again. Well, now the hood is actually bent under. The radiator has been turned up and is now parallel to the road. We can see that we've got damage on the front doors. The back of the vehicle, not bad other than a shattered window. But things are looking rough. Look, we even dropped the uh, exhaust onto the ground. As we move on to the uh, base passenger van, look at that. It, it's such a base passenger van, they didn't even let passengers sit in the, they, they didn't put seats anyway, in the way back. Now, if this were a different time, like when I was a kid, <laughs> we'd still sit in the way back anyway. In fact, that was probably like a playroom. Oh, until you do that. Pop the hood up, smash the windshield. You can see the engine still sticking out, although it is shoved up underneath the dashboard. The roof line is completely bowed. And as a matter of fact, you can even see that the, uh, the roof itself is wrinkled in several places. Things not looking good for the passenger van. Now we've got the Vanster long wheelbase, and you're going to see variations of all of these, as I'm sure you have seen in the list every time we bring that up. Switching over to the external cam, and if you're not familiar, this is the camera in Beam NG, where Beam NG basically takes control and tries to make it look like a TV show or a movie, and uh, it's the camera angle that yours truly does the worst in driving however look at that because we hit it at a slight angle oh look at that the body pulled away from the frame itself there in the front we've got the side doors that are bowed up and now overlapping lots of damage to the driver's side passenger side door is popped wide open things not looking good for the H series van. Come on, let's roll through this. Ah, the H15 passenger automatic. Now, at least this one, they put the back row of seats in. And uh, I, I do like the, um, the little window tint strip across the front windshield. I don't know why. It's a nice detail. In the meantime, we are inside cruising around here taking a look as we are driving the passenger van down the road down the hill and straight into the immovable guardrail oh yeah oh look at there we can see the ground through the door oh and the tire <laughs> the tire has entered the driver compartment that's that's probably not good i'm just i'm gonna go on a limb Oh, look at that. We can also see the roof line is bent up and bowed up away from the door itself. The door's shoved back. 
This time, the vehicle wrapped up in that guardrail, hanging on tight. You can see the front wheels have been shoved back as well. Uh, but all in all, Everyone from the uh, everyone behind the passenger, the front passenger and driver, should pretty well be good to go as far as uh, safety is concerned. That's my guess, anyway. As you may have picked up on, these D uh, H series, excuse me, vehicles are going to have different. Uh, features to them depending on kind of where they fall in the timeline of things this one slightly different front end not to mention wheels and and there are some other uh, cosmetic differences also some engine differences certainly the fact that uh, it was up just a little bit you can see when it slammed into the guardrail it bounced way back and the damage done to that little dude right there. Now we're moving up to the H25 Vanster. Slightly more powerful engine. This one has the uh, <laughs> most generic wheels ever. This is like police wheels on a van. What is up with that? I have no idea. Oh, getting a little bit of air. Hitting at about 83 miles an hour and there is a beautiful example of the front wheels getting shoved up underneath the driver's compartment i mean look at that those wheels are really up inside the uh, where the the where the floor mats would be inside of the vehicle for the driver and the passenger that's, that's a pretty rough hit. I'm just going to throw that out there. In the meantime, we've got this Vanster with the uh, cap on the top. So plenty of room to get in, move around, walk around. I was kind of hoping that, you know, it was going to be a conversion van. You know, have, I don't know, a sink and a bed, maybe a TV. You know, have some stuff going on. That needs to be a mod. Is that already a mod? That may be a mod. I don't know. If it's not a mod, it ought to be a mod. Oh, oh, look at there. <laughs> Sent the doors flying. The front bodywork, especially on the driver's side, ripped apart. Look at that. Look at the angle on that vehicle. That reminds me of one of those Hot Wheels um, vet vans. I, I don't know. You'd have to be of a certain age to remember the vet van uh, minivans that came out with uh, Hot Wheels. Could have been a mo matchbox either way. But essentially, it was the marriage of a Corvette and a van, uh, which ironically is kind of what the original minivans ended up sort of kind of looking like, which is kind of weird. I digress often. And now we catch up with the Belasco police. We got the lights flashing, heading on down the highway. Honestly, this is more like a weird passenger tour van that the police confiscated and converted <clears throat> ouch and again sometimes that guardrail is grabbing onto the vehicles and sometimes the vehicle is able to get away and in this case there is no getting away look at that look how far back that wheel is shoved up underneath the vehicle and, and I'm, I'm i've said that a lot already and i'm probably going to say it a lot some more just because i I really want you to grasp the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The weight of what's happening. Look how far out that wheel actually is compared to where it ends up almost directly under the driver's seat. Uh, that, that's a whole lot of force, a whole lot of damage. Oh, see, there you go. Perfect example. In the, in the meantime, we're throwing doors. The hood is all <coughs> askew, as one might say. Wow, we got missing doors. We got popped open doors. Oh, look at that. I love the damage model in this game. The soft body physics that BeamNG is able to achieve and the things they're able to do in the game. Look at that. Even the back is separated away from the frame. That's really one of the most damaged vehicles I think we've seen in this uh, in today's H series. Oh. Let's go here. 
Uh, did you say this was the four wheel drive? I think they said this was the four wheel drive, the Vanster. We take a look. Oh, got a little lens flare action going on there. Gotta love the lens flare as we roll down the hill at 85 miles an hour, sending doors flying. Oh, look at there, bodywork separated from the vehicle itself. The van is bowed, you can tell definitely at the top. Smashed windshield. Again, though, the hood manages to hang on by that corner. I'm not quite sure what's going there, but wow. <laughs> That's that one that one piece has been expertly crafted. Oh, the Beamcom van. Now, this van has, uh, let's see, ladders and pipes on the roof rack. So the question, of course, is, will we be able to send those pieces and parts flying off into the distance? Yes, we can. Look at that. That is how you launch a projectile from a van in case that's something that comes up in conversation. Oh, <laughs> look how short the van looks just because of where the wheel placement is. But th this damage is huge. That is not good at all for the Beamcom vehicle. Someone is probably losing their job over that one. How about the A25 passenger long wheelbase? This is, oh my gosh, man. This is a hefty vehicle. This is almost like one of those government vehicles. Had the windows been tinted really, really dark, this would be one of those secret government vehicles that you slam into a guardrail in order to have the doors thrown off and whatever diplomat is inside. Now, here comes the action movie to take him down, kidnap him, take him away, whatever it is. And I'm not biased. It could be a her. I don't know. I'm not writing the movie. Well, technically, I guess I kind of am. Anyhow, the four-wheel drive Vanster uh, H25, D25, whatever the 25 is. I can't remember off the top of my head. should be H25 since it's an H series. But you know what? It's the 25 version. Oh, okay. Uh, that angle did not work well for me at all. Um, I was trying to do a cool cruise along the road. Obviously, I wasn't able to control things. So we'll switch to the external camera which should be slightly above my skill set in terms of driving. Oh, you know what? Uh, that's close enough. Oh my gosh, we are flying down the hill. Oh man, I, I just, that is really weird. Why does the hood stay attached at that one point? I, I would like to know. I want to know. I, I want one of the BeamNG devs. If you're out there watching, which you're probably not, but if you are, if you do watch this, why? Why is that one corner always the one that is staying on there? How is that node attached in such a way that it seems to never slash very, very rarely come off? I don't know. Wow. This is a very two-tone... Uh, oh, what were the name? What was the name of that almost minivan vehicle? The like Safari? Was that a Chevy Safari or Ford Safari? Whoever made the Safari, that's what this reminds me of. As we send the passenger door flying over the hill. Talk about a projectile. That thing is out of here. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting to see the door just absolutely go sailing off into the distance on this particular vehicle. We've got we've got vans coming up later that are definitely worthy of that type of damage because they're going to have much faster uh, you know much faster engines in them. They're going to be tuned for speed. I can totally see that was not expecting that in that particular vehicle. As we move along, uh, 
we get a little bit of a bounce coming over that hill. And depending on where the van lands during that bounce, that seems to determine whether it's going to ricochet off of that uh, guardrail or not. And I, I don't know what that noise is. That's a, it's a very unhappy engine slash unhappy uh, pieces and parts. That is for sure. Now, this is kind of a cool, deep green. Look at there. I'm going to open the doors. Two-tone... Yeah. All right. Well, let's cruise down the road. Now, in all fairness, I can't go crashing the vehicle into the guardrail with the doors open just because that's not a level playing field compared to what we've been doing. Oh, well, at least the door didn't come off. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of hanging. Hanging by a moment. Look at the Look at the tilt that we have. Oh, and the front end just pushed up and, and mushed, bent up there at the beginning. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. There are so many, so many details that go into watching these vehicles slam into something else. In this case, the guardrail, or as we saw earlier, that wall, because I wasn't driving very well. But still. Oh. And I don't know if you caught that or not. When that vehicle bounced up and then bounced back down again, you could actually see that axle separating from the chassis. And just, again, as I mentioned in the other one, we've got this kind of weird lean, but that's because the body has become separated from the chassis in the back. And how do you how do you, how do you how do you reconcile this? Well, here's how you reconcile it. It's a game, and it's a game with no actual people in it. So there you go. Tuning in with another police vehicle. Come on, this one's got the cattle pusher on the front. Whoops. Okay, we missed. Oh, look at there, ended up on all fours and then slamming into the guardrail. That was fantastic. I'm leaving that one the way it is. Uh, I know it wasn't exactly right, but oh, that was great. I love it. Going down, rolling over on, sliding down the hill and then eventually riding ourselves. I, you, 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 no, I, you can't plan that kind of thing. Well, okay, it's BeamNG, you could technically plan that kind of thing. But I I did not plan that kind of thing. That was, once again, uh, just a product of my lack of being able to drive from certain angles, knowing where the road is. So, what does that tell you? That tells you that you should never hire me to hang off the hood of a car in order to get a great camera shot. Oh, look at the dash. We were in the driver's seat. We are no longer in the driver's seat. We are now between the front uh, the front two seats. I, I don't even know what happened there. That is so crazy. Again, the damage, the shattered windshield, and the doors and the everything. Oh. Oh. All right. Wait. What am I doing? Okay, what? I don't know what this is. I, I don't know. I don't know what the camera is trying to do. I uh, I was trying to find I was trying to find a different camera angle and it wasn't working for me. Anywho, heading down the hill. Oh took the entire back end up into the air and when it came down it did not come down the way it went up meaning that the you can see that the body is separated from the chassis look at how much space there is now between the wheel well and the tires look at the way the body is now shifted and leaning from the standard starting position 
yeah, things are a little rough. As we move into the H35 Vanster with the extended top or expanded top or conversion top or I don't know what you call that. What do you call that when you do that to a van that's not actually being converted into anything other than just having a roof put on it? I don't know. Here we go. It's the loft van. Oh, well, we don't have to worry about the hood hanging on with this one. It went flying over the hill and down into the forest below. So much damage. In fact, the back end, did you see that? The back doors are folded in on themselves. The front end is bent under itself. The doors, well, the one door that's left on that side, it's been pushed back. Things not looking good at all for the H series. Now, this is a drift model and I do not do well with drift vehicles in this game case in point come on come on come on keep it under control no no just just, just let me go well we've definitely got some damage wrapped it around two trees count them one two two trees thing is not good all right let's let's try this again let me see if I can maintain some Emblems of control. We didn't need that door. It's okay. We're just going to leave it back there. Oh, brother. Well, you know what? Oh, end over end. And this time we crash the back end of the vehicle into the guardrail. And we're going to take it. I know it wasn't pretty. And I know it didn't exactly follow suit with everything else we've been doing. But that's how it goes sometimes in Beam NG. Sometimes I just... I, I, I got to take what I can get. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, that means you have to take what I give you in terms of uh, how the vehicle ends up crashing at the bottom of the hill. Oh, man. I love this game. I absolutely love it. Mm. Sent that door flying. Oh, that is very, very rough. We've got various pieces and parts. Oh, look at the front end. The driver, yeah, oh my goodness. The, the the driver seat section is completely like lifted up. Wow, that, I, that may have been happening in the past. I don't know. I don't recall that happening. But, whew. Ah, now here we go. How about this big old bad boy? Now this one is lifted up. And so I am anticipating that uh, we're going to get some pretty cool results because I think the front end may actually be, if not higher than the guardrail, certainly it's going to rest much higher on the guardrail. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The, the, yeah, for all intents and purposes, it essentially pushed the chassis of the vehicle back under the body the body is is has been lifted up off the chassis and moved slightly and of course we've got you know window breakage the front end damage what have you but just the sheer i guess angle of attack i, I don't i'm not quite sure uh, to me that's almost kind of like a uh uh, a, a fulcrum type situation you know we were set higher and so therefore the damage went straight to the undercarriage versus the bodywork taking a huge piece of it kind of like that <laughs> uh, you know what the the chassis takes the damage anyway i should not be laughing um but it's hilarious to me. I, I, I absolutely love the damage. And this is a great example. You can see where the wheel well is and where the wheel should be compared to where the wheel ended up. All right, here we go. Loving the blue color. Once again, a different front end. I think, uh, I think we've got three different front ends. Uh, for the for the regular vans, anyway. Oh, let's see what this does. Oh, 
busting everything apart, popping the doors open. Uh, one thing that has definitely been more consistent than not. Oh, look at that. Wait a minute. That, the whole vehicle is bowed. Wow. Um, but one of the things that have been consistent is that front end, crashing it into the guardrail and getting that distinctive slope that's been pretty consistent throughout most of the vans that we have seen in this series. Wow. And I thought the other one looked like the Safari. This one definitely looks like that Safari minivan kind of thing. Although I know this is not a minivan. It still just kind of has that same look. And the color scheme doesn't, doesn't help. And oh my goodness. All the pieces and parts just completely blowing apart, going in whatever direction they want to. And we've got the, the I don't know, the earmuffs, the, the ear wings, whatever you want to call those, those front quarter panels peeled away and ripped aside from the impact. The engine shoved up underneath the dashboard. And we just continue to take these poor H-Series vans and do what we're going to do with them. Now, I do have to say, this one here, I like this. This, for whatever reason, I like the dark blue on the silver bottom, that two-tone. Uh, it's got that kind of uh, almost Chevy Silverado front end to it. I like this one a lot. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wreck it. Oh... <laughs> uh, I love how all the doors pop open. Everybody out. That's the end of that. And once again, the hood is just uh, hanging on. Oh, look at that. Everything bent up. Once again, the, the rear separated. Look at where the bumper is compared to where the body is now. Oh, that is just... It, it's so painful, yet so entertaining. And I hope, to some degree, a bit educational as well. Because... We're, we're all learning what happens when you take a vehicle and repeatedly slam it into, or not it specifically, but you know we slam it and its brethren into a guardrail that doesn't move. Now, unfortunately, the guardrail is not all really realistic in the game. I don't think we care. Okay, well, now we've managed to get the front door stuck to the same pivot point that the hood is normally stuck to. Oh, once again, we've got a bowed vehicle here. I don't believe the chassis is actually bowed. I think it's just the body, but we've blown out most of the windows. Certainly have messed up the front end. The, the wheels on that particular vehicle were also bent out of shape, which I'm sure has been happening the whole time. I've just not been paying attention to the wheels because we've been watching all the other stuff. Oh, how about the wood trim interior on this one? In fact, it almost looks like it's got some of that uh, Corinthian leather on the inside. Again, if you're of a certain age, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That fake leather stuff that was, oh, touted by Chrysler as being you know, this Corinthian leather. Uh, well, oh, hi. How you doing? That's that's probably not a good sign. You're supposed to be on the outside, you know, under the engine, you know, in, in the engine compartment. Well, where the engine compartment used to be. Uh, once again, we've got most of the windows blowed out. You know, it's interesting, but in most of the crashes, especially in these uh, extended wheelbase vehicles, that leftmost rear window doesn't seem to break. I don't know. That's weird. How about this? This is the Vanster without the rear van compartment. So here, we're going to get a look at what happens to just the front end when there is no rest of the vehicle. Oh, and not only that, look at the chassis. We can definitely see how the chassis has bent. That was a straight piece of metal at one point. Now it is bent up. Of course, the doors are <laughs> slung open, windows shattered, but oh, the bent chassis though. 
Ah, oh, so, so cool. Where do we go from here? The cargo box upfit. Ah, yeah. Truck it up. The smarter rental. So smart, we're going to drive it across the bridge. And once we get across the bridge, we're going to drive it down the edge of the city block, over the hill, and right through the intersection into the guardrail. And thus we can see the roof of the thing getting shoved forward. The cab is absolutely destroyed. Uh, let's see what happens when we open the doors. Uh, you know what? We should just close them back again. <laughs> uh, this game. Oh my gosh. Absolutely love it. Go truck it up dot BNG. I wonder if that URL actually works. I need to try that. I got to try to remember to go try that and see if that works. I'm sure dot BNG is probably not an actual URL. The cure curiosity caravan, which looks suspiciously like the mystery machine. Ah, uh -uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You see what they did there? Well, Let's see if curiosity kills the caravan. Uh-oh. Out of control. <gasps> that was spectacular. I should have been doing that the entire time. Oh. Slammed off the passenger side wheels. The body and chassis ripped to shreds on the driver's side. Look at the front end. All <laughs> mangled and dinged up the passenger chair was nearly hanging out of the vehicle that was fantastic oh man ah the curiosity caravan all right here we are with the uh there it is the towing upfit this is the car hauler upfit for the h series if you're not familiar with this, the back end actually lifts and uh, it exp it uh, you can extend it and retract it or you can slam it into the guardrail and it's funny when you do that it that's very pigeon-esque. Very pigeon-esque on the front end. Let's see. Does the uh, car hauler back end still work? I mean, it does. It's not happy. But it does lift still. So, I mean, technically, we need a car hauler for the truck that we slammed into the guardrail. We need a car hauler for our car hauler. Oh, look at this. How about the BeamNG equivalent of an A-Team van? <laughs> Ah, uh, the A-Team. I pitted a fool. Oh, I pitted a fool who drives a van into a guardrail. <sighs> Once again, some of these vans, when they slam in, all of the doors just... The momentum is carrying through, and all the doors just pop open. Ah, oh, the, the wheels shoved up underneath really both ends. I mean, things are just not pretty in beam NG. Look at that. That door no longer fits on the body because the body is so bent out of shape. Oh, uh, we've got just two more to go. One of my favorite vehicles in the game, the Vanster off road. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now this also has a bull bar on the front. So I'm very curious to see if the bull bar can help absorb some of the damage well i mean from a technical standpoint the answer is yes uh but it certainly didn't absorb enough of the damage to prevent the rest of the vehicle from getting damaged i don't even know look look how far that wheel has been shoved underneath the driver compartment absolutely insane as we move into the last 
vehicle of the day and one of my all-time favorite vehicles to absolutely destroy in BMNG. It's the H Series Ambulance. Now, I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of speed on this, so I'm not quite sure what the damage is going to look like as far as that goes. Oh, well, I say that. Okay, we hit it at about 77 miles an hour. The front end completely mangled up. The back end actually looks pretty decent. Uh, the back doors are a little messed up, but all in all, not too bad at all. So there you go. Crashing every vehicle in Beam NG Drive. Hope you enjoyed the video. Oh my goodness. Special thanks to Hero of God, Gamergall, Los Wilco, Connie C, and Zachary for supporting the channel on Patreon and through channel memberships. Patreon.com slash David in Arc, or you can check channel memberships down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I really do. I thank you a whole bunch for coming by and watching this old man do crazy stuff in Beam NG. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm David in Arc. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Oh, it's a great day to be an ambulance in Beam NG.